Today we are going to be looking at modern publishing. It's not just pen and paper anymore. What exactly is modern publishing? In order to understand this, we want to first look at traditional publishing. Let's look at the history of the Bible and of the printing press. Here uh, we see the printing press. The very first thing that was ever published on the printing press was the Bible. A matter of fact, it's the number one bestseller. And this is uh, the, the, before the Bible had to be handwritten, meticulously handwritten by uh, people who were living in caves that were, because the Bible were illegal. And, and so much that the Bibles were actually publicly burned in the streets. And all of the, imagine all these handwritten Bibles that took months to transcribe and to repeat, and they're all being burned and illegal to own. A matter of fact, the Bible was actually stuck with a small group of people, the priestly caste, who were able to read a language that no one else understood. And it was actually chained upstairs to the walls in the days of Martin Luther. That's how he was, the only way he was able to read the Bible. But in the invention of the printing press, now no longer Bibles had to be handwritten or passed down orally or memorized but they could be published by massive amounts all over the world. And Mark 13 verse 10 gives us a prophecy that this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the nation. Um, and actually, the gospel must first be published among all nations. So the publishing is so essential. It's just as important for the paper to be published as it is for the messengers to go. Because a sermon is soon forgotten, but a book remains. Books are able to go where the living preacher is unable to enter. That's why the printed page is so essential. Now, I wanna look at some pages. This is kind of interesting that Facebook is actually, they have what's called a Facebook page. Also, the social media Google Plus has a Google Plus page. And this is, this is interesting because um, these, whenever we're going on, we're, we're flipping, even when we're flipping through websites, um, or while we're going, while we're publishing on these different social media pages, it's kind of like we're flipping through a book. We're going from page to page. A matter of fact, when you're flipping from page to page, it's like, what are you doing when you're on a website? Are you not flipping from one pa web page to another web page? These things are, could there be a similarity? Now with WordPress, the doors have flung wide open to allow us to be able to publish the Word of God online so that people can view these. And, and it's so simple that the common people, no longer do you have to be a publisher or a printing press operator in order to publish the Word of God, but now anybody can create a website and be able to publish the Word of God there. A matter of fact, the Bible prophesied in Psalm 68 verse 11, the Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that publish it. And never before has there been such great amount of people that are able to publish the word of God as in today through modern publishing. And think about it. It's from the light that comes from, the, from WordPress, from these online pages, that we're able to reach the isolated ones people who we would never be able to reach in person or by knocking on their doors or by um, visiting with them face to face, some of these people can only be reached online. People who would never step foot into a church building are willing to come to a online church out of curiosity because it's online in the quiet of their own home. This is a fantastic way to be able to uh, reach those and to go places where they couldn't go. There is a recent uh, research, the latest data 
from Global Web Net Index shows that the average internet user now spends around six hours each day using the internet. Six hours a day. That's roughly one third of their waking lives. That's amazing. Now, this is actually the average worldwide audience. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I don't really spend six hours in front of a computer screen. Notice this photo that we took while we were in Spokane, Washington, doing some evangelism there. This is about 15, a crowd of 15 people standing at the, um, the stoplight. What are they doing? They're, they're on their phones or mobile devices. They're waiting for it to go green. People are standing right next to each other and they're still on their screens. Six hours is not just in front of the computer, but on any mobile internet enabled device. This is, uh, this is such a powerful way that we're able to reach these people who would not be interested in listening to a discourse. Imagine trying to compete with their screens if you were doing some street preaching and you were giving messages on the other side of the corner they're all so caught up in their phones but if you go live on Facebook and you're able to do some social media street preaching you can reach them because your voice will be popping up on their screens it's very interesting modern publishing it's not just pen and paper anymore a matter of fact looking at publish buttons do you know what the button is in, on WordPress in order to make a um, in order to make a but uh, a post to go public to the world it's the word publish what about YouTube uh, or Facebook the button to make a, a post on a Facebook page to go public to the world it's the word publish or even a, a Facebook note to make that to go public is the word publish. That's the button. Even YouTube videos. Every single time we send a YouTube video on, online every Friday, it's the word publish. There's publishing buttons all over the internet and it's amazing. Publishing is taking on a new form. As we're learning about the printing press and WordPress and how everybody's able to use this, it's amazing. You know, we went to Google and we searched for the word press. And you know what the first thing that popped up was in Google Images? That is the press of today. We have cameras, we have devices, we have recording devices, audio, video. Why is it called the press? This is modern publishing, friends. This is what is available to us today. I was reading, when I was studying about publishing, our ministry has a history of publishing, studying with some of the, uh, some really incredible minds and specialists in regards to various uh, specifications of publishing. I was reading through one of my favorite Christian authors, there's a book, Christian Service, and it said, let every believer scatter broadcasts, tracts, and leaflets, and books containing the message for this time. This book was actually written in the 1800s, and as I was reading this, I was thinking, well, that's kind of interesting. Why does it say broadcast in the 1800s? What did that mean? And so I went to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, which is a contemporary in that time. Broadcast really just means casting or throwing seed, like a sower went forth to sow. So I was like, oh, that's like what Jesus was talking about. In Matthew 13, how the sower that went forth to sow, <clears throat> that seed was the word of God. So we are, the, the publications are sowing the gospel seed. Now, I was thinking, well, when I think of broadcast, what comes to my mind? Or what maybe comes to your mind? I think of television broadcasting, news broadcasting, radio broadcasting, YouTube live broadcasting. Facebook broadcasting, or even maybe screencast or webcast. These are some of the modern forms of broadcasting or sowing the gospel seed. This is amazing what is available to us today. 
we can broadcast the Word of God. We're broadcasting right now. Now, I want to share with you some statistics. This is, this is how many years it took to reach 50 million users in history. So, it took the radio 38 years to accumulatively reach 50 million users. The television, it took 13 years. The internet, it took four years. An iPod, it was three years. I mean, this is how fast the, the people are being able to reach 50 million people. Facebook added over 200 million users in less than a year. Wow. Is social media only a fad or is this the biggest shift since the industrial revolution? <clears throat> it's not going away, friends. If you if if Facebook was a country, it would be the world's largest country. And <clears throat> you see uh, right there you have China as well. YouTube would actually be the fourth largest country in the world. WhatsApp would be the sixth largest and uh, Twitter would be the ninth. There's a greater population on Twitter than there are people in the United States. Think about that. And F Facebook in June of 2017, uh, there was officially 2 billion monthly active users. That means these people are actively logging in within a 30 day time period. 2 billion people, the world's population last I checked was at 7 billion. And so what this tells us friends is that <clears throat> that there are billions of people on these social media platforms who need the gospel and who you could show a difference and you can make a difference in their life. So as you are able to publish the word of God on these different modern publishing platforms, you can draw millions of people on Twitter who you wouldn't otherwise be able to have access to in just your if you limit yourself to the community and I'm not saying just do social media not community outreach I say let's do both but let's not neglect one let's not do one at the neglect of the others so as I continue to study I was realizing um, I was studying the teachings of Jesus and how he was showing us how to use the gospel net Jesus said to his disciples follow me and I'll make you fishers of men and I was wondering, hmm, what do fishermen use to cast, um, to catch fish? And I was realizing, well, some people use a fishing pole. Other people use a net. And it's interesting because um, God, Jesus was showing that he wants them to use the uh, when he said I'll make you fishers of men straight away they left their nets Jesus employs the most efficient methods of reaching the gospel he didn't talk about fishing poles he talked about nets and it's interesting Revel um, water in the Bible refer represents people nations multitudes and tongues you can see Revelation 17 15 and the fish represent people. So, and then the sea is represented as, as like this world, this nations, multitudes, tongues. And I, I was thinking, what if there was a way, if only there was a way that we can have a net that is so broad and so wide that it could cross through the barriers of language that could reach to all nations and be able to grab this massive amount of fish of souls into the, the harvest if only wait a second the internet this is such a powerful means to be a net that we can cast that is connected with the entire world or how about this social networking or maybe even the world wide 
web. Do we have a worldwide message to go to all the world? Yes, we do. So why don't we use worldwide platforms to publish the gospel as the verse in Mark said that we, were, that we read together? So when we're looking at messengers of the gospel, God has called us to be messengers of the gospel. He wants us to share with others what we, He has shared with us. Now, the Word of God describes this time of, this, this, of a great revival. When people are able to wake up, the gospel goes to the world in faster times than ever before. And He is looking for people that are able to consecrate themselves to Him and to be a part of taking this message to the world, yet even the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he represents this in nature by the falling of the latter rain. This latter rain, it's very interesting because when you look at how the latter rain is to come in scripture, Deuteronomy 32 verse 2 and 3, it says, My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and the showers of grass, and upon and, and showers upon the grass. Here it is, because I will what? Publish the name of the Lord. So the latter rain falls in the form of publishings or publications. God wants to get the message out through the publishing work. And that's why this book evangelism says more than 1,000 will soon be converted in one day, many of whom will trace their first convictions to the reading of our publications. Are you ready for this, friends? Do you want to play a part of this? Ask yourself, God uses nature for a reason. Why does he illustrate this? Where does the rain come from? The rain comes from the clouds, right? We see Zechariah 10.1. The rain, the message, the publications, it comes from the cloud. Do you get it? iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive. What are all of these, these, um, these databases called? They're called the cloud. Now, we aren't the only people who store information in heaven. Psalms 119 Verse 89 also states, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So even God himself stores information in the clouds. Matter of fact, this, what we're using right now, we're using Google Slides. This is a cloud-based server to offer to you the message of the gospel. That's what we're using to record. We also use Google Docs that you can take notes as you study devotions. You can write Bible studies and instantly, without having to print, publish, or send to some publisher, you're able to send links to as many people. You can put it on a website and thousands can download it easily with no extra cost. With less resources, you can reach more people. This is amazing, my friends. Speaking of clouds, what do clouds represent in Scripture? Well, clouds re are represented by angels. And here are some proof texts that show that. Now, when you look at what an angel is, in the Webster's Dictionary, it shows that an angel is literally, it's a messenger. That's all that it means. An angel is a messenger. A messenger is an angel. What is our message? Revelation 14.6 describes, speaks about the everlasting gospel. And this is the first time that the word gospel is ever used in the book of Revelation. And the only time in all the Bible where the word everlasting and gospel are used in the same place. This is the gospel that has no beginning and no end. And it says it needs to go to all the nations. And it is represented as having three angels that are proclaiming this message. It is the three angels message. This is the everlasting gospel. And an angel is a messenger. Remember this? Angel is a messenger. Do you guys recognize this? Many of you do. This is Facebook Messenger. Could it be possible that the Lord would have us to use this messenger application as the method to be able to share 
the everlasting gospel with those who are waiting, who are dying for a lack of knowledge, a knowledge that you have. I really like this, this verse in 2 Timothy. It says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Now, we may not be able to preach or to travel and speak or be an eloquent speaker, but all can be an evangelist. All can share our publications. All can share this video and have a part in the last message of warning to a perishing world. All is able to click share on or repost or retweet and are able to share these modern publications, do canvassing work, and to be able to share with those who otherwise would have not known. And we are called to do the work of, a, of an evangelist. Now, what is in the very center of the word evangelist? It's angel. God is calling you to be a messenger. And young people, I want you to see, if there is anything you can get from this, know that God has called you for a higher purpose. I don't want you to be able to leave this video and ever look at Facebook Messenger the same. I want you to be able to see that there is a work to do in these last days, and God has called us for a higher purpose. And one of these things we can do is video publishing. Some of these video publications, we've already seen the button for YouTube to go public is publish. So every video that's published online is a publication, in fact. And when we're looking at YouTube, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. Google is the first highest search engine. And Google owns both YouTube and Google. So what happens in this generation? There's a phrase that says, if, um, if we ask a question that we don't really know, we say, what do we say? I don't know. Let's Google it. So what happens in this generation when people don't know something about God or they don't know something about the Bible? They start, they go to Google and they search and they want to know what, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Or they want to know, how can I give my heart to Christ? Or how can I be a Christian? How can I overcome? How can I walk with God? And they're searching these things. They want to know. So where do they go? They go to YouTube. They go to Google. So if your WordPress, your YouTube, your Facebook is providing publications that are answering these vital questions that people are searching for, then the people of God's answers are able to show up in their search engine. This is called search engine optimization, SEO. You don't have to know that in order to publish valuable content that is answering people's questions. And by so doing, you are sharing the gospel, going live. Such a tremendous way that video publishing is going for. And this is how the gospel is able to go to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. And I want you to know, like, there are about 202 different countries in the world, depending on what source you go. And what's very interesting is on our, um, our first YouTube channel that we created, this was a photo from our channel. And if you notice on the bottom right, we have reached 206 different geographic locations from places that have been prior to sealed to the gospel, such as Iraq, um, China. The, there's, uh, we're also reaching places like Kenya, Trinidad, Tibet, Tobago, New Zealand, Germany, Indonesia, places that we don't even speak their language, but they're still able to see through captions. They're able to hear. They're able to, to hear the gospel where it may not be readily available where they are. A matter of fact, even on our online church, the language barriers are being broken down because we have a button that you can click. It will automatically detect your language. Wherever you are, whatever you speak, you can speak in Spanish. I can speak in English. You'll read in Spanish, and I'll read what you type in English. 
It's like a modern gift of tongues. Truly, through modern publishing, we can go to every language and tongue and people. I have seen some amazing miracles, some amazing testimonies of people being reached. When we're looking at modern tracks, take a look at some of the statistics here. We post these Bible tracks on social media, and here is one about Halloween. This, this track had reached, in the top right corner you could see, 1,813 people that have been able to be reached. This other track has reached 2,577 people. Imagine sharing with 2,500 people. Here's a track that reached 3,264 people, or 54 people. And it was shared over 131 times. How amazing is that? That just by the click of a button, there was canvassers that are taking it and sharing it with others. One thing I noticed with traditional publishing is you're limited. However many publications you print, that's how many you can sh share and no more but let's say you printed more than you shared how do you know how much you can get out sometimes you'll have way more of this one you have way less of this you have more of that and the demands of the people is it's kind of hit and miss it's kind of hard to keep track or to maintain that inventory that you have to store but here we can publish 3,000 tracks, 1,800 tracks, 2,500 tracks, depending on the needs of the people, and with no extra cost. How incredible is that? No inventory. This reached over 3,200 people. What exactly does 3,000 people look like? Let me give you an example. This is the Wells Fargo Arena. This has a maximum seating capacity of 3,000. Imagine what effort it would take for you to pass out a physical printed paper to each of the 3,000 people here. Imagine what it would cost to publish 3,000 printed tracks weekly to be able to share. That's what we're able to do with modern publishing and beyond. And what blows my mind is that these missionaries, these media ministers are able to w this accomplish this work from the comforts of their own home. This is what we are what is available to us today. This is modern publishing. It's not just pen and paper anymore.